will discuss lecture 7-3 on non-inverting casking difference in operational amplifiers. Students should be reading sections 5.5 to 5.6 of the text in order to explore this topic in more depth. The objectives are to be able to name the five op-amp terminals and describe the voltage and current constraints for an ideal model, which we've been using for all of the problems on operational amplifiers, be able to analyze simple circuits containing ideal op-amps using KCL, be able to recognize the following types of op-amps, non-inverting, inverting, summing, and difference, and be able to determine the gain and output of cascaded operational amplifier circuits. A non-inverting amplifier produces an output voltage that is scaled, a scaled value of the input voltage. The gain must be greater than one, and the polarity or sign of the input will be the same as the polarity or sign of the output. A difference amplifier produces an output voltage that is a scaled value of the input voltage. The gain can also be less than one. The following table summarizes the input and output relationships, gain and circuit configurations for non-inverting and difference amplifiers. These relationships can be derived by using KCL and using the two basic assumptions or conditions for ideal operational amplifiers. First, we have a non-inverting amplifier. For the non-inverting amplifier, V0 is equal to 1 plus RF over RI times VI, and this explains why the gain can never be less than 1, because it's 1 plus the ratio of the feedback and the input resistor. So the gain is 1 plus RF over RI, and the way to recognize a non-inverting amplifier is that the input voltage goes in at the positive terminal, the feedback resistor connects the output back to the negative terminal, and the input resistor is tied between ground and the inverting terminal. For a difference amplifier, the V0 equation is R4 times R1 plus R2 over R1 times R3 plus R4 times V2 minus R2 over R1 times V1. So the gain for V1 is negative R2 over R1. The gain for V2 is R4 times R1 plus R2 over R1 times R3 plus R4. So the way to recognize a difference amplifier is that there's inputs on both terminals into the positive and the negative. So I have a feedback resistor that goes from the output to the negative terminal and a feedback resistor that goes from ground to the positive terminal. And I have two input resistors at the negative and positive terminal. There are a couple of simplifications for a difference amplifier. If all four resistors are the same, then the equation simplifies to a pure di difference amplifier of V0 is equal to V0, V2 minus V1, as opposed to a weighted difference. Another simplification is that if the ratio of R1 over R2 is equal to R3 over R4, the equation simplifies to R2 over R1 times V2 minus V1, which is a gain on a simplified difference between the voltage inputs. So the gain for both of the inputs for the simplified difference amplifier is R2 over R1 and negative R2 over R1. Recall that operational amplifiers are designed using transistors and diodes and are used to perform mathematical operations. There are two basic assumptions or conditions used to analyze ideal operational amplifiers, virtual short circuit and infinite input impedance. Using these assumptions and KCL, it is possible to find the output of any operational amplifier circuit. Analyze the following circuit to determine the input and output relationship. What type of op-amp configuration is it, and what is the output if the input is 5 volts? First thing to recognize is even though it's positive on top and negative on the bottom, this is still a non-inverting amplifier. So we need to identify the feedback resistor, the input resistor, and the input to find the output. So here we have RF is equal to 10 kilo ohms, and RI is equal to 10 kilo ohms. So the gain, V0, is equal to 1 plus 10K over 10K times the input Vs. Remember, RF is the resistor between the output and the negative terminal, and RI is the resistor between ground and the negative terminal. So V0 is equal to 2 Vs. So if the input Vs is equal to 5 volts, then V0 is equal to 2 times 5, which equals 10 volts. For the following circuit, assume the op-amp is operating in its linear region. What is V0? 
Well, here we know we have a non-inverting amplifier because the voltage goes in at the positive terminal and we have a feedback resistor at the negative terminal and an input resistor. So here we have RF is equal to 5 kilo ohms and RI is equal to 2 kilo ohms. There's something interesting going on here though. We have a voltage divider as the input, but there's still just a voltage going in at the positive terminal. So using the voltage divider, we have that the voltage here, which we're going to call VS, VS is equal to 8 over 12 times 3. So VS is equal to 2 volts. And since RF is 5K and RI is 2K, we have 1 plus RF over RI times VS equals V naught, which is 1 plus 5 over 2 times VS is equal to V naught. So V naught is equal to 3.5 VS. So V naught is equal to 3.5 times 2, which equals 7 volts. For the following circuit, use superposition to find the output voltage V naught. This is also a difference amplifier, but it's a different type than what we examined on the table at the beginning of today's lecture. However, we're going to use a different approach to solve this one, which is superposition. So first, I'm going to draw the circuit with the 6 volt source on, and the way that we turn off a voltage source is we short it to ground. So I'm going to short the 2 volt source to ground. And the feedback resistor is 40 kilo ohms. Then I'm going to redraw the circuit with the 6 volts shorted to ground. And the input resistor is 20 kilo ohms. And the feedback resistor is still 40 kilo ohms. And now we have the 2 volt source, which is also tied to ground. And what you should see here, so here we have an inverting amplifier. So V naught prime would be equal to negative 2 times 6, which is negative 12 volts. And here V naught double prime is a non-inverting amplifier. So V naught double prime is 1 plus 4 over 2 times 2, which is 3 times 2 or 6 volts. So V naught is equal to V naught prime plus V naught double prime or negative 12 plus 6. So V naught is equal to 6 volts. So now for the final example, this is also a weighted difference amplifier. And we could simply just use the equations that I gave you on page one of today's lecture to solve the problem. But to show that these equations can actually be derived by using concepts such as KCL, KBL, ideal op-amp conditions and superposition, we're actually going to solve this problem by using superposition. So similar to before, I'm going to draw it once with VA on and once with VB on. So remember VA is 2 volts, so I'm going to draw a 2 volt source. The 20 kilo ohm resistor, the 5 kilo ohm resistor, the op-amp, negative terminal, and the output V naught. And now, because the VB is off, and that goes to ground, I'm then going to have an 8K and 2K resistor in, in parallel that goes to ground. And since this has the same voltage at the other terminal, this actually is just ground. So once again, I have an inverting amplifier. So if I call this V naught prime, V naught prime is equal to negative 5 over 20 times 2 or negative 1 over 2 volts. So now I'm going to do the same thing for VB where I'm going to set VA equal to ground by shorting it to ground. So here I have the circuit and here's ground. 20 kilo ohms, 5 kilo ohms, here's the op amp, negative and positive, here's V naught, 
There's the 8 kilo ohm resistor, VB, and the 2 kilo ohm resistor that goes to ground. Now here what you should see is that this is a non-inverting amplifier and I have that voltage divider situation at the positive terminal again. So voltage at the positive terminal is 2 over 8 plus 2 times VB. And V naught would be equal to 1 plus 5 over 20 times the voltage at the positive terminal. Or V naught is equal to 1 plus 5 over 20 times 1 fifth VB. So if we simplify this, we get that V naught is equal to 1 fourth. times VB minus 2. So now the question says, so now the question says, what range of values for VB will result in a linear operation? So that means when is V naught between the two power rails? So V naught must be between negative 12 and positive 12, which means that 1 fourth times VB minus 2 must be between negative 12 and positive 12. So by solving this compound inequality, we get that VB must be between negative 46 and positive 50 volts for linear operation. IPAMP circuits may be cascaded without changing their input-output relationships. A cascaded operation amplifier connection is a head-to-tail arrangement of two or more IPAMPs such that the output of one is the input of the next. When op-amp circuits are cascaded, each circuit is called a stage. The overall gain of a cascaded connection is the product of the gains of the individual op-amp circuits, or A is equal to A1 times A2 times A3, and so on times AN. Assuming the following op-amps are operating in a linear region, what is the output V0? What is the numerical value of V0 if V1 is equal to 10 millivolts and V2 is equal to 15 millivolts. We're actually going to use a technique where I make this into system block diagrams to solve this problem. So I'm going to represent each of the op amps as a box with an input and an output. And then we're going to discuss what the gain for each of these stages are and what the overall gain for the circuit would be. So here we have V0, and here we have V1 and V2. So the first thing you should notice is that this op amp here is a non-inverting op amp. It's non-inverting, and the gain is 1 plus RF over R1. So that's a non-inverting gain, 1 plus 25 over 10 or 3.5. And I'm going to call the output of that stage VA. So VA is equal to 3.5 V1. And what you notice here is that V2 is an inverting amplifier and the gain is negative RF over RI. So it's negative 50 over 10. So the output of that stage is negative 5, and I'll call the output on the diagram VB. So VB is equal to negative 5 V2. So now here we have a summing amplifier. It's a summing amplifier, so it has two gains. It has a gain for VA and a gain for B VB. The gain for VA is negative 60 over 20, which is negative 3. And the gain for VB is negative 60 over 30, which is negative 2. So now, the output of just this stage would be V0 is equal to negative 3 VA minus 2 VB. So now, putting in the values for VA and VB, shows how we cascade gains together. V 
V naught is equal to negative three, the gain of the second stage, times 3.5, the gain of the first stage, times V1. Minus two, the gain of the second stage, times negative five, the gain of the first stage, times V2. So V naught is equal to So V naught is equal to negative 10.5 V1 plus 10 V2. And if you want to know the output for V naught, V1 equal to 10 millivolts and V2 equal 15, this would be negative 10.5 times 10 milli plus 10 times 15 milli. So V naught is equal to 45 millivolts. So the final example for today's lecture is a design problem. Design a cascaded operational amplifier to find the average of three input voltages. So first, let's assume that our three input voltages are VA, VB, and VC. So what we want to have here is that V naught is equal to VA plus VB plus VC divided by three because that's how we take an average. We can rewrite this as one third VA plus one third VB plus one third VC. So since we have multiple inputs, we know this has to be a summing amplifier. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw an op amp where the positive terminal is tied to ground and I have three inputs all going into the inverting terminal. And I label them VA, VB, and VC. And there's my feedback resistor. Now the output of this stage I'm going to call V1 because the output of this stage would actually be inverted. So if I want the output of this stage to be negative one-third times VA plus VB plus VC. I know the gain is RF over R1, so I just make the feedback resistor 30 kilo ohms. You typically want to select resistors in the kilo ohm range when you're designing an op amp. If it's too small, the op amp may draw too much power. If it's too large, it may create a noisy signal. So keeping resistors in the kilo ohm range is ideal. So the feedback resistor would be 30 kilo ohms. And then, because the ratio has to be one-third, I would make each of the input resistors 90 kilo ohms. Now, since the problem statement asked me to design a cascaded op amp, I'm now going to make that the input to an inverting amplifier. But since I already have my gain of one-third, I don't want to change that. So I want the second stage to just have a gain of one. I can do that by making the feedback and the input resistor one kilo ohm. So by doing that, this stage has a gain of negative one, and since the gains multiply, negative one times negative one third gives me a gain of one third. So my output here is VA plus VB plus VC over three. over three. This concludes today's lecture on non-inverting and difference amplifiers.